Hello students, welcome back. So we will now study about the commercially available register. In that, we will study about how to understand the color codes inscribed on the carbon registers. And we will also study about the simple combination of register, that is a series combination and a parallel combination of registers. So let's start. So let's do a question based on the concepts we just learned. So the question goes like this. A wire of length L and area A is beaten into a new wire of twice the length. Initially, the value of the current for a potential difference V was I. Find the reading of the current for the new wire given the potential difference is same. So, let's say the dimension of my initial wire were L and A. That is L being the length, A being the area. Now, it's being beaten into new wire of dimension 2L and area A dash. I don't have a clue about area A dash but I definitely know that the volume of the initial wire and the final wire remains the same. So L times A equals to 2L times A dash. With this expression we found out that A dash is equal to half the initial area. We also know that R is equal to rho L by A. So let's term this as the initial resistance. So this is my initial resistance. Now the final resistance is R dash is equal to rho. New length is 2L. New area is A by 2. So this comes out to be 4 rho L by A. Which implies the new resistance is 4 times the initial resistance. With resistance being increased to 4 times my initial resistance, it implies that the new current is 1 fourth of the initial current. So this is my final answer. Now let's move on to the new topic that is color codes for resistor. The purpose of color codes for resistor is that it's easy for us to make out the exact value of the resistance of these resistors by just having a look at the embankments in these resistors. So each color specifies a number and the order also plays an important role. So the first two rings from the end will give you the first two significant figures of the resistance and the unit is obviously in ohm. The third ring will actually give you the place of the decimal. At what point should we place the decimal? The fourth ring will actually indicate the tolerance value of this commercial resistance. So right now we have a resistance which is brown. So this is brown, this is violet, this is black and this is gold. So according to a particular chart, this resistance comes out to be 17 plus minus 5% ohm. So this is the tolerance value. This is the actual value of resistance, 17 ohm. So let's take another example corresponding to it. So this one is again brown, this is violet, this is black. And I don't see a fourth ring over here. So this actually means this is 52 into 10 to the power 0. So this comes out to be 52 plus 20%. So no color actually specified 20% of tolerance value. So this is a table corresponding to different colors. What different color actually means? So B that is black means 0. B that is brown means 1. R red is 2. Orange is 3. Yellow is 4. Green is 5. Blue is 6. Violet is 7. Gray is 8 white is 9. So these are for the first two rings, first two color rings, right? And the third one also can be used with, from the same table to find out the decimal point. Now the fourth ring which actually gives you the tolerance value has only three possibilities that is gold, silver and no color. So gold tells me a 5% tolerance, silver tells me about a 10% tolerance and no color it means there is a 20% tolerance. So with the use of this table we can find out the value of resistance and its tolerance value of any commercial resistor. 
So now we'll deal with the different combination of resistor. But we won't be dealing with all the possible combination of resistor, but only the two simplest combinations of resistor. So first we'll deal with series combination of resistor. As the name suggests, we have to arrange resistance one by one. That is R1 is placed over here, R2 is just next to R1, R3 is again placed just next to R2. So the effective value of the resistance across these two points is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. It's pretty obvious because this is R1 as name suggests or let's say as the property suggests is the opposition or the resistance to the flow of electron. So I'm adding these two, these barricades side by side. So they will add up to give me the net resistance that is they will add up like this R1 plus R2 plus R3. The next combination is the parallel combination. So here I have R1, R2 and R3 all piled up against one another. So the equivalent resistance as you guys know of will be 1 by R where R is the equivalent resistance is equal to 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 plus 1 by R3. So we will be dealing with quite a lot of problem based on parallel and series combination. So let's start off with the problem based on that. So right here I have a circuit. This is 1 ohm. This is 3 ohm. This is 6 ohm. This is 4 ohm. 5 ohm in this end, 10 ohm in this end, and 2 ohm in this end. So we need to find out the equivalent resistance between these two points, points being AB. So we can clearly make out that 3 ohm resistance and 6 ohm resistance, they are in series with each other. 5 ohm resistance and 10 ohm resistance, they are also in series with each other. So I can draw an equivalent circuit diagram which kind of looks like this. So this is 1 ohm. And this is 9 ohm. This is 4 ohm. And this is 15 ohm. And this comes out to be 2 ohm. So again if I have a proper look at the equivalent circuit across A and B, one is in series with this combination. That is the combination of 9 ohm, 4 ohm and 15 ohm. They are in parallel with each other. So if we found the equivalent resistance of this setup, then we just need to add 1 ohm to 2 ohm to the final result of this. So if we find out the value of the equivalent resistance for this particular case, the equivalent circuit comes out to be this. 1 ohm, 2.34 ohm, if you, have, if you could do the calculation, you will get 2.34 as the resultant of that. So this is point B, this is point A. Now the final answer will be simply the addition of 1 ohm, 2.34 ohm and 2 ohm. So the final answer comes out to be 5.34 ohm. So this is how you actually solve our a problem based on series and parallel connection. While going through the lecture, if you face any doubt, you can post your doubt for free at askitns.com. In order to do so, you first need to navigate to the askitns.com. Then while going to that link, you can use discussion board link, which is over here. Clicking on, on this particular discussion board link, it will take you to a page where under the head of ask the experts, you can post your doubt under various categories and the team of Ask ITN expert will get back to you between 24 to 48 hours. So we just studied about how to decode the color codes in carbon registers and how to solve series and parallel combination in electric circuits. So now we'll shift our attention to understand what exactly a cell is. It's the same cell which drives current in the circuit. So stay tuned for my next part.